Hello and welcome to this B Business B video. This video is going to be a quick run through of some of the areas and topics that you need to know for your B Tech Tech Award Enterprise Finance Examination. In this video, you're going to see a series of questions on some different topics. Pause the video, attempt the questions, and then at the end, I'll reappear to explain the answers you should have got. So then let's look at the answers. So a cost that does not change with use would be a fixed cost. A cost that does change with use would be a variable cost. The cost to make a product or service would be your cost of sales. What a business owes would be your liabilities. What all the money that goes into a business would be your revenue. And items that a business owns would be your assets. Hopefully you got all of those correct. So you need to highlight in green all of the forms of revenue. So you should have got sale of products, that would be a form of revenue. You should have got interest from money that you've got in the bank, so if you're saving money in the bank. The owner's personal investment would be a form of revenue. And also renting out a spare room, for example, that would be a form of revenue. All the others on there were examples of costs. Okay, on the income statement, you need to work out the gross profit and the net profit. Now remember, you need to know the formulas for this, so you need to remember that gross profit is revenue minus cost of sales. And you need to remember that net profit is calculated by doing your gross profit minus your expenditure. So using those formulas, you should have done £20,000 minus the £12,000, which would have given you £8,000 for your gross profit. You then need to work out your net profit. So that would have mean first you need to add up all your expenses. So you've got £3,000, £1,000 and £2,000, which gives you £6,000 in expenses. And you need to take that away from your gross profit, which gives you £2,000. Remember, the net profit is the profit that the business gets to keep at the end of it all. So assets are items the business owns, and you had to shade in green the items that were assets. So you should have got machinery. You should have got the stock and inventory. You should have got the car. You should have got the cash in bank. And you should have also got trade receivables, because remember, this is money that you're due to receive. So people you sold items to on credit, they are all assets, things the business owns. So in this task, you actually try and shade in in green all the current assets. Now, it's key to remember here that current assets are things that you can turn into cash within a year. Remember in finance, the word current means within a year. So the best one, obviously, is cash and bank. Secondary would be your stock and your inventory. And last but not least, it would be your trade receivables, because this is money that you're due to receive, remember, items you sold on credit. Okay, in this one, you have to try and identify the current liabilities. So remember, liabilities are things that we owe, and current means within a year. Now on here, there's only two current liabilities. Firstly, you've got your rent to your landlord that you have to pay, 
And secondly, you've got your trade payables. Your bank loan would not be a current liability. It'd actually be a non-current liability, a long-term liability. So that may have caught you out. Okay, on this one, you had to complete the cash flow forecast. So, rather than doing the whole forecast for you, I'm going to take you through the first few columns so you can see basically how you calculate this and obviously where the liquidity problem may have been. So get your total inflows, you just need to add together your different inflows. So in this case here, you've got cake sales and you've got drink sales. So in the first one, you'd have 150 for January, you'd have 220 for February, 300 for March, 380 for April, 430 for May and 480 for June. Now to get your total outflows, you obviously need to do the same again, but you need to add together your total outflow. So that's going to be your cost of sales for the cakes, so the cost of make the cakes, cost of sales of the drinks and your rent which is 160 pound so your total outflows would be 215 for january 246 for february 280 for march 314 for april 339 for may and 364 for june and now you need to calculate your net monthly now your net monthly is basically remember the difference between your inflow and your outflow for that month so we had 150 pound going in in january and we had 215 pound going out in january that means the net monthly is minus 65 pounds so we would do the same all the way across so you should have a net monthly for february of minus 26 a net monthly a positive 20 for march positive 66 for april positive 91 for may and 116 positive for june now you're giving your opening balance of being zero because the bank account starts with zero in January. And to get your closing balance, you do your opening balance plus your net monthly. So in our case in January, zero plus minus 65 means that we finish the month with minus 65 pound in our bank account. In other words, we are overdrawn. We're using our overdraft. Remember, the closing balance becomes next month's opening balance. So February's opening balance will be minus 65. And we do the same again. So we know that we had a minus 26 net monthly. So minus 65 plus a minus 26 gives us minus 91. We are still overdrawn. And remember that minus 91 closing balance becomes the opening balance for March. So minus 91. And our closing balance then was going to be a minus 71 because we had a positive of 20. So minus 91 plus 20 pounds leaves us overdrawn by minus 71. Remember that minus 71 moves towards our opening balance for April and our closing balance would be minus 5. Our minus 5 closing balance then becomes our opening balance for May and our closing balance should be 86. And then, of course, last but not least, our opening balance for June would be 86 and our closing balance would be 202. I obviously said, where is the liquidity problem? How could it be resolved? Well, the liquidity problem is those first four months between January and April where the business is in its overdraft. How could it solve it? Well, it can make sure it arranges its overdraft so that it can use the money. The owner could invest more money. It could try and reduce the costs. It could even try and increase the price. Remember, ideally, the way you're going to solve a cash flow problem is either increase your revenues or decrease your costs. However, if you want to take a short-term measure by sorting out the overdraft, that might be something you could do to solve the problem. Hopefully, you got that right, and hopefully, you understand what we just covered there. Okay, there was two parts of this question. The first part was to try and put them into order the financial documents, and the second part is to obviously match the definitions up. So let's do the first part first. So this whole process starts when you place a purchase order. Well, remember the purchase order is actually the document that says I want to purchase an item. So you can see on there where you should have matched it up. Once the company has placed the purchase order, it should obviously receive its order. And along with the order will be a delivery note. And that delivery note is a document which tells you what items are being delivered. Now, once you've got your order and you've checked it off against the delivery note to ensure everything's there, you will normally let the company know and they would send you an invoice. Now, the invoice is the document asking you to make payment. And of course, the company would make payment and they would receive a receipt. So the receipt is the document you've got, which tells you that you've made the correct payment. 
Once you've done that, at that point, now the process is normally complete. Of course, if something goes wrong, you may want a refund. And to do that, you might ring them up and you ask them to return an item, for example, and they would send you a credit note. Now, a credit note is a document which then gives you the ability to have a discount, an amount of money removed from the bill. That could be from the bill that you're paying now or a future one, for example. So it's basically a document listing any discount you're entitled to. And last but not least, your statement of account is the document that records all the transactions that have taken place. So any purchases you've made or any credit notes that you've given, and it'll give you a figure overall. That is your financial documents. Okay, this question is all about the statement of financial position. Remember, this document shows the value of a business, so it takes into consideration the assets and the liabilities it's got, as well as how it might use any capital or money that it's got in the business. You need to fill in the boxes with yellow. So firstly, fixed assets, remember, are assets that take longer than a year to turn into cash. And in this case, here, you just need to add it together. So you would have got £11,000 total fixed assets. You then need to do the same for your current assets. Now remember, your current assets are assets that you can turn to cash within a year. In this case here, you would have got £16,000 in that box. And you were given current liabilities. Remember, things that you owe that have to be paid within a year. In this case here, you would have worked out the current liabilities were £13,000. Now, your next part is to work out the working capital. So the available money that you've got on a day-to-day -day basis. And obviously that's called our net current assets. To do that, we do our current assets minus our current liabilities. And you need to know that. So you would earn 16,000 from your current assets minus your current liabilities of 13,000, which would have given you 3,000 pound. So the business has got 3,000 pound available at that point. You then needed to work out the total assets less the current liabilities, and you do exactly what it says on the tin. So you do your £11,000 from your fixed assets, plus your £16,000 current assets, and then you subtract from that your £13,000 current liabilities, and you're left with £14,000. Last but not least, you had to work out where the money had come from or how much had been put into the business. And if you'd done 9,000 plus the 5,000, you would have got 14,000 pounds. Those of you who are astute will notice those two numbers balance. That's because the total assets less the current liability shows you how much money's in the business. And of course, the bottom part shows you where the money that's come from. So those two figures have to balance, hence why this used to be called a balance. This question is all about break even. Now, the first part of this question requires you to actually complete the table. So, hopefully, you understand what the term revenue means. If not, remind yourself that's all the money that goes into business. You need to remember that variable costs are costs that do change with use or output. Fixed costs are costs that don't change with output and use. And your total cost is calculated by doing your variable costs plus your fixed costs. So you're told here that each cake sells for £5 and it costs £3 to make, so there's your cost of sales. Your rent is £150. So you know that rent is a fixed cost, so it doesn't matter how many they sell, £150 can go all the way across the board. So zero cakes are sold, it's still going to cost you £150 to rent. 50 cakes are sold, it's still going to cost £150 to rent, and so on. So that would be £150 all the way across. Your revenue is obviously how much you make. So if you sell no cakes, you do nothing times five, and that gives you a big fat zero. If you sell 50 cakes at five pounds, you'll have 250 pounds. If you sell 100 cakes at five pounds, you'll have 500 pounds. If you sell 150 cakes, you'll have 750 pounds. If you sell 200 cakes at five pounds, you will have a thousand pounds. And if you sell 250 cakes at £5, you will have £1,250. And there your revenue is calculated. Your variable costs, of course, are based around that £3 to make. So you sell no cakes, nothing times three is zero. It costs you nothing in variable costs. If you sell 50 cakes at £3, it would cost you £150. 100 cakes at £3 would be £300. 150 cakes at £3 would be £450. 200 cakes at £3 would be £600. And 250 cakes at £3 would be £750. 
now to get your total cost remember you need to add your fixed cost and your variable cost together don't make the typical mistake of trying to add your revenue here remember revenue is money going in and your total cost obviously cost is money going out basically so you add your two costs together so your total cost should have been for zero cakes just 150 pound 300 pound for 50 cakes 450 pound for 100 cakes for 150 cakes it should have been 600 pound 750 for 200 cakes and 900 pound for 250 cakes if you got those numbers correct then well done you've managed to complete the table and then we had the next part of the question so this last part of the question requires you to label up a break-even chart now to do this the first thing you need to do is to work logically so the costs that don't change you know are fixed costs so as the costs don't change, look on there. The line that's straight has got to be your fixed cost. So your yellow line is your fixed cost. Then, of course, we can then work from there. So look at the line that starts from your fixed cost. Well, you know the line that's got to start from your fixed cost has got to be your total cost. So you know that blue line has to be, that dark blue line has to be your total cost line because it starts from your fixed cost position. We also know that the line that intercepts the total cost line is going to be the revenue line so the only line that goes across and intercepts that total cost line is going to be the revenue line there so you can see on the blue line there so the orange line has to be our revenue line and of course our variable cost line is that gray line that runs from zero and goes through um, our fixed costs and working away up just underneath our revenue of course there the last part of this question obviously required you to mark on where the break-even point. Well, it's got to be where the total cost and the revenue line cross. And if you look there, it's actually 75 cake. So it's actually 75. You could have shaded in the area after the break-even point and labeled it as area profit. And you could have shaded the area before it and labeled that as area of loss. However, I didn't ask that in this question.